we're gonna make some salad with fresh endives. So let's take this end. Oh, you just do it half. And then stop. Okay, so salad is actually almost done. So now we have this little cheese. this yesterday the walnut opener so you insert it in the back of the walnut and oh there you go wow voila so fresh walnuts it's really the seasonal thing to enjoy wow. It, and I'm just gonna do some coffee. Flow the sand and some a bit of uh, olive oil. Okay, so that's the walnut salad. Very easy. Okay, so next up is the simple uh, mushroom saute. It's very simple, just oil, salt, and uh, pepper. That's it. So it's ready. We're going to put in the oil to lightly saute. So it's already smelling very good. I'm going to have a bit of water. They are served. Let's eat. So the audio during this meal didn't turn out too well, so we're gonna go ahead and talk about it in retrospect. <laughs> yeah, so let's start with the endive salad. What did you think? I thought it was good. I remember it being fresh and crispy and it was seasonal. That was great. I mean, the walnuts, it was so fun to just have that walnut opening tool and kind of <laughs> really have fresh walnuts on the salad to that level where you're opening up the shells and putting them on <laughs> and yeah I mean it was very simple and I liked it. If I were to add anything in retrospect I think it would have been nicer if I added like a pear or like a Granny Smith apple something a little bit sweeter or a little bit tangy to complement the slight bitterness of the endive but overall that was good. All right, so now let's move on to the mushrooms. So those mushrooms, very brightly orange, seasonal, jihor mushroom, also known as chanterelle, they were earthy. The aroma is very potent and also the meat is very firm. It's like super kind of meaty texture. I really liked it with the simple, you know, the saute in the simplest form. That's how I can really appreciate mushroom. Wonderful. Well, I'm happy to have experienced it and 
Talk to me about this mozzarella from Nanina, fresh mozzarella. Yes, it was so fresh. So at the Nanina store, I was told to eat this mozzarella as is. Not to put in the salad or not to, you know, mix it with like tomato or anything. No olive oil, no salt, no pepper, just as is, which I did. And I am very thankful for the advice because this mozzarella is so good as is. It is so fresh. As you bite into it, you have this juiciness coming out of mozzarella. It's so creamy. It's so like milky, this taste of fresh buffalo milk from France. It was the freshest mozzarella I ever had. It's nothing squeaky or rubbery. This is so pleasant as it's. Hmm. Well, cheese very well worth it. But if you choose to eat vegan or plant-based, well, Paris has J and Joy. I know, Paris <laughs> and, got it. <laughs> and in this case, me having the, the blue cheese was also delicious for me. I mean, it was felt quite fermented, had a sourness to it, and having it with the next item, we should talk about the bread from Shinyapan. Mm. Oh, amazing combo. And the little quick thing for me to say about this bread is it felt like I was maybe eating a piece of the earth. It felt and tasted so earthy, but what's your thoughts on the bread? Yeah, so before I get into the bread, let me tell you a little bit about this unique bakery. So Xinyapan, the baker, is Xinyasan. He focuses on naturally leaving bread with ancient grains. So ancient grains aren't commonly harvested these days because they take a little care and time to grow, but they are very high in nutrition and also very easy to digest. So with that said, the bread I had from Xinyapan, it was so sweet and toasty. The aroma with such a sweet character is something I never had before. So I was pleasantly surprised. So it sounds like people should really try Xinyapan if they want to taste a bread that they may have never tasted before. Maybe, yeah. Maybe. And what else do we have here? Olives. Oh, olives from Marche Bastille. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Well, as a side note, Marche Bastille is huge, mm -hmm. one of the largest open air markets in Paris, mm -hmm. and the amount of options and selections they have in terms of produce and items is, is very vast. There's so much to see, and it feels so welcoming to eat fresh fruits, vegetables, produce in Paris with a market like that, and these olives we're just there, mm -hmm. sort of hanging out, looking yeah. good. So it's like, let's let's get some, and yeah. we got some. So yeah, it was it was really, really good and pleasant, especially with this meal. Oh, so good. Oh, so good. <laughs> but yeah, that does it for this meal. I say we move on to dessert. Yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, dessert time. <laughs> so let's start with the strawberries. Not quite in season, but when I saw them at Marche Bastille, I wanted to get them because I like small little strawberries and I don't see them too often in New York. So I was like, hey, why not get them? And it was supposed to be one euro for about a pint or so, but the guy ended up just saying, yeah, you know, you could take two for one euro. I was like, what? Okay, so we got more strawberries than expected, which we had no issues with. But what was in season was those figs. The figs were phenomenal because when you cut it open, the figs have this like deep red, almost like magenta colored jam like inside. I thought it was like a jam. Somebody like cut it open and like injected the jam in it. <laughs> <laughs> my recollection, my visual, my description, if I remember correctly, was something about it felt like 
crushed raspberries were trapped inside of the fig. And wow, that fig could just, you could cut it open and it could just be dessert by itself, like a little cake, like a little fig cake. <laughs> One ingredient, fig. Yeah. So good. <laughs> yeah. And also another thing was in season was those walnuts. Yeah, the walnuts. We had some on the salad and here we enjoyed them as well with that little tool that you had gotten the day before yeah. to open up the walnut shell so easily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I found that tool as we were browsing uh, this store called Merci and that was like a you know a few euro and it's so nice because you don't need to get like a huge nutcracker. It's just like a small gadget, fits in my pocket, I can just whip it out anytime when I see fresh walnuts. And so easy to use, so easy to open up those walnut shells. And yeah, what else we have here is flan. Your flan. Yeah. You want to talk about it? Sure. So sometimes the flans that I have eaten before could be on either side. One, too rubbery, too kind of stiff very hard or it could be very runny and too loose and it tastes like cornstarch but this one was pretty perfect so the crust was not sweet it was so nicely buttery flaky and uh, deeply caramelized but also the middle part was super creamy it was very rich has lots of fresh vanilla beans not too sweet it was very well crafted flan, I would say. I really enjoyed it. And you also got two cakes. Yeah, I did get from Veggie Patisserie. So one of them is baba, which brioche bun, soaked in alcohol with some whipped cream on top. And yeah, it felt alcoholic. <laughs> it was deeply soaked, this one. It was heavy. And overall, it was good. It was something kind of new for me to try, to experience, and to get into this world of baba a little bit. And another thing I got from Veggie Patisserie was this chestnut macaron. Now that too often does not come in vegan form in many places, so it was good to have it, macarons in general, and having the chestnut filling, the seasonal chestnut was good with the citrusness on top. Overall, it was pretty sweet, and I thought it would go very well with coffee or tea. In this case, we have tea in those cups, so I was enjoying it with some tea and yeah, just good stuff overall. One of the great things about Veggie Patisserie for me is that they actually have these individual cakes that are made, crafted, and being vegan, it's just so nice to experience these cakes that are often not vegan <laughs> in vegan form and for them to make it in a way where they just taste so good. But what else we have here is your goodies from Shinyapan. Yeah, so those are the two other things I got from Shinyapan. One is a cookie and another one is a scone with the cheddar cheese and rosemary on top. They were both nice. I would say a Shinyapan is really the place that you can get all these baked goods to enjoy the taste and aroma of the grains. I think that's what it really is about and that's what it really shines from this bakery. So both of them tasted quite phenomenal in terms of the flavors and complexity of the grains. So if you want to explore and enjoy the flavor and aroma of what those ancient grain could offer, go to Shinyapan. Shinyapan, great spot. And that pretty much covers it for this kind of little dessert or mm -hmm. little dessert feast that we had yeah. from this feast in Paris. Mm -hmm. I'm very full, you know? Yeah, I'm full. Yeah. <laughs> well fed. That was a, a, such a feast. Okay, so. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you. All right. Good night. Good night.